Yeah, we good. Uh, Open uh, State coach and Logan Shaw get his courtesy first question. Oh yeah. <laughs> good morning, everybody, and uh, thanks for coming on out. Uh, you know the weather's bad, so I'm not gonna hold you long. Uh, last week was a uh, hard fought battle against a team that had won the um, East uh, SWAC East for the last four years. Team didn't want to quit and didn't want to give up. Our team met that uh, with the fight of their own and, and continued to fight for five overtimes. And we were successful with a foot, uh, field goal from hometown Hunter Hanson and uh, was able to get out of that homecoming crowd with a win and bring it back to the gun. All right. Coach, just talk about being in that battle five overtime, just pulling that out. Just talk about the morale it has for your team moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has a, a lot of morale, you know, winning uh, and then winning against that caliber opponent. Uh, you know, that, that, that does a lot for your team. And, uh, you know, to, for those guys to go in and, you know, and, and to had just had the type of loss that we had to Grambling, uh, it, it's, it shows you the, the uh, you know, the, the kind of team that we had. We had a lot of freshmen playing that made a lot of plays. We had a lot of upperclassmen that were – uh, continue to cheer guys on and and to get into that situation where you know it's, it's uh, where we went on the road. It's hard to win on the road, and then to go in homecoming and and win is even harder. But we you know uh, we we took that win, let the guys celebrate it uh, at the end of the game, and got on back uh, home and got getting ready for South Alabama. Uh, I think you said earlier in the year that uh, some of the, you can't really tell where you're in the race until about middle, midway through the season. What do you think this win puts you as far as like? Well, see, on? for one, last year every week we were in a position where we had to wait until our coin lose. Right. We took that faith and put it in our own pocket. Right. And right now, our faith is in Alabama State. We don't have to worry about uh, anybody doing anything else but us winning. So every day we go out and lace up, it's about what we do. And if we want to get this thing done and we want to win, our destiny is in our hands. Coach, you've been preaching. You just got to win your side of the your side of the division. Just talk about how big of that, big that win was to you know achieving that ultimate goal. I mean, if they the king of the mountain, and now all of a sudden we push them down, we gonna enjoy we gonna enjoy this for a while. So now we, you know, we we got the ones that had been out in front, and uh, you know, you're not talking about uh, winning three uh, games against your lower tier conference members. And now waiting to play Alcorn uh, State, we, we played Alcorn State, the, the champions of the East up front, and got it, got the business done. So now we're not – that one win don't go for a win in every other game because now they're going to be gunning for us. So we have to prepare for that and continue to gun for them. Talk about that target now. You see this team being prepared and equipped to, to face those stiff challenges from here on out. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's – the, the key that we have to do, we have to make sure we protect against the injuries. We got South Alabama, another game this week that really is is only for recruiting and is only for another opportunity to line down and play in a good venue. It has nothing to do with our overall goal of going out uh, and being the SWAT champions. You know, South Alabama is a program that's one in five, but the FBS, they have a lot of bold division talent, more resources, more more everything. We're going in it as a uh, revenue venture, as as, uh, as always, but we're going in to play a football game, and we'll use this game to compete and to play some guys that we hadn't really played to see if they can help us in the bottom half of that race in the uh, for the Eastern uh, Championship. Coach, you made the um, – K.D. Davis came in and played well at quarterback. Just talk about his play. Saturday in the game. Well, you was talking so bad last week about the quarterback. Hell, I had to change something. So, so you, you kind of forced my hand on that. But no, but KD, you know, we we knew that uh, we needed morale building even after those those uh, three losses. That you can't do the same thing and expect a different result. Uh, we changed scheme and we wanted to change the personnel to just get a new energy with the players. It's not that uh, you know uh, DJ Pearson had been doing anything bad because it was a collection of stuff that was going wrong for his performance. So we wanted to change the, you know, change that off. We wanted to put a new new person in with, with new tangibles and put them, you know, into the game to see if we could pick the morale up around them. And as you can tell, you know, with the young freshmen and young guys making plays on balls down the field, catching the ball, our first 
driveless passes, which hadn't been in a long time. So uh, that tells you alone that we put ourselves in a position that the morale has changed and, and the attack has changed somewhat. Coming off such a big conference win, and now you jump out of conference. Is it kind of one of those things that you wish you would? You can't change the schedule, obviously, but you wish it was still just full speed ahead with the next conference game, or? Yeah, you you want to you know play your conference games, and you know these kind of games are you know they normally out of the way by now. Mm -hmm. And right now, you know we're going into game six, and right in the middle of conference, there's another uh, obstacle of something that's totally different from. Uh, your quest of what you prepare for all off season. So, and uh, with uh, what we went through at Auburn and Kennesaw, those out of conference games, and now going to South Alabama, you know we we have to you know stay away from the injuries and and uh, you know and injuries is not something that just come from playing those games. I hope nobody take me uh, the wrong way that playing these games promote injuries, but it promotes the risk of injuries. And uh, and we've been on that bottom end where our risk. It has kind of went up, so we're we're down. Uh, we got about seven players that we started out the year with that's out. We got now we just rebuild a new team from the bye week that's playing pretty good, and now you're about to take them back into the uh, Lions den again. So we have to do some different things that we we come back out healthy. Has there been the game that was that long? Five no, I've, I've done three, yeah. but five. Uh, you know, even if it would have took six, you know, we might, we'd have held around. You know, it, it was just one of those things where you just, I mean, it just was on and on. And then, uh, you know, we, the crowd was, I mean, you know, it was a different kind of crowd down there. So, and, and uh, for our guys, you know, a lot of times it was situations that happen that if your guys are not mentally tough, they would just quit. And they didn't. They just kept fighting and they kept finding reasons to fight. And uh, that was... Uh, so inspiring to me is that, you know, it, it took Titus Howard was going both ways. You know what I mean? You, uh, you know, that, that's kind of unheard of that a guy say, hey, coach, I think I can block the kick. And now, you know, they say, well, Alcorn missed six kicks. Well, Titus forced six kicks the wrong way, you know, because he's a, you know, he opted to go in and say, coach, I can get that push that we're not getting. And he was able to get that, uh, you know, and then you look at the, the stats where well, we win the game, but we low in stats, and everybody want to tell you how we need more stats. But well, the week before we beat Grambling in stats and Border L, and now you, so you got to pick and choose. It's like, you know, we just want to get to the middle of the road. And as I said before, and I tell the players, don't listen to the people. Just continue to work the plan, continue to trust the process. Because if we end up with 50 yards and a win, I'll take it. So it's South Alabama's homecoming. How much are you guys looking forward to going down there and spoiling yet another homecoming? Well, again, going and spoiling South Alabama homecoming is not my ultimate plan. My ultimate plan is to win the swag. And now, we going to South Alabama, we going like every other game, we going in to win. And uh, so happen it happens to be their homecoming. But we know that, you know, that we're playing up again. You know, we're, uh, the odds are against us this week going into this homecoming. Uh, the same way they were against us last week, but a little bit more higher stakes. Did you say anything to Hunter before that final kick? No, I said when he missed the kick, you know, it's it's, uh, it's different when you're dealing with guys. Like Hunter is one of the guys that I recruited, and he's a guy that I coached to special teams. And so when he missed the kick, that's when they need you the most. You know, mm -hmm. I don't need to put that extra pressure on him about making it. You know, when he missed the kick, I said, look, I believe in you, man. Don't worry about it. We're going to get it done, and this won't be the reason that we lost. It, it just continue to have the faith because I'm going to need you again. So when he's going on the field, I leave Hunter alone, and everybody else knows to leave Hunter alone. Let him get in his own psyche. You know, when you're about to do something that, that is all resting on you, whatever it is that floats your boat, go ahead and do that. And let, let's get the other ten guys on board to make sure that they get their job done. Uh, because uh, that same opportunity came for us to win down in Alcorn two years ago, and we had to kick block. And it wasn't the kicker. It was the guys up front telling the kicker, let's go, let's go, and now they miss a block. So, you know, we just get everybody to focus on their job, and he pulled through as he always does. Y'all, back on the road again, but you're traveling down the road to Mobile. Just talk about how important it is for the fans to come on down and support the team going into that environment. You know, the, the thing about it is that we always want to see our fans, you know, in, in the arena. We need our fans in the arena. You know, we went into Alcorn homecoming, no band, no cheerleaders, nothing but his tap. 
You know what I mean? And, and those guys, you know, when they, they found a way to cheer themselves on. And it's not that we're, you know, we're trying to box everybody out to say this, you know, that we're going to do this ourselves because we need all we need all faculties. We need the band. We need the cheerleaders. We need our fans. Uh, and, uh, you know, and they found a way to win in that circumstance and Alcorn. And, and as being a coach, I can't worry about the heads in the seat. I got to worry about them heads on the sidelines. So if they want to start supporting their team, then they'll come out and support. But my biggest focus right now got to be them heads on that sideline. And if the heads and the, and the bleachers want to come and, and sing their alma mater and sing their fight song, we would love to have them. But right now my focus is strictly on the sideline.